Hey guys, a little bit of a random talk, more so this is going to be just a one shoot here. I might do these in the future. Uh, very low editing, but more so just what I'm talking about. And what I'm talking about today, and if you've never played this series, I would really highly recommend it, is Life is Strange. Especially the first two games being uh, the original Life is Strange, and then the prequel Before the Storm. Both of these games were made by Don't Nod a Games, if I'm correct, and it's kind of remarkable that they would make they would make a game called Remember Me or something along that lines, and it was very unforgettable. But what they did is they essentially took kind of the gameplay aspects of that of um, Telltale, and they definitely added a lot more interactivity to it. Uh, they a lot added a lot more. Um, content to it and the first story the first game the game that it's based on is based on this game uh, you're playing this girl named Max who comes back to her hometown in Portland and she's re because she's been accepted to this expensive uh, call like kind of I almost say college but it's big high uh, high society art studio and you rekindle a friendship with your old friend Max, who you actually kind of gave the cold shoulder to when you moved to Seattle years and years ago. And since then, Max has gone through a lot of trepulation, a lot of hardship. And while if you hadn't gone through any of those sort of circumstances in your own life, but you had friends who did go through that, there's already a means of connectivity with Chloe as a character. She may be a little bit annoying sometimes, and there's sometimes where she has a tad bit overdramatic, but really, this game has some of the best story writing um, in terms of a practical sense. The main gameplay niche about it is that you watch Chloe die at the beginning of the game, and then you're able to reverse time. And you find out you have the ability to reverse time, and this gives you kind of really cool abilities to have different interactions with conversations. Like, oh, if you say you got the wrong thing, if someone's asking you what is the answer to this and you got it wrong, you can just reverse time and go back. You, you can't reverse the whole game. Like, obviously, it's a mechanic, so it only does it so often. But at the same time, Max is also having visions of the town being destroyed by a giant tornado, which is kind of impossible in Portland, but as you slowly start to realize, you bending time is starting to have an effect on reality itself. On top of this, on just a slight side note, the, the music for Life is Strange is really well done too. Admittedly, it's a bit kind of hippy-dippy um, indie rock music, but... It's actually one of my favorite video game soundtracks. Anytime I go on a bike ride in the summer, um, or if I go hiking, I put that on every time. I've put the whole score, the, the whole soundtrack on every time. It is that good to listen to when you're going on these kind of adventures because the story takes place in a fictitious town in Portland. But funny enough, I played the game before I actually went to Portland for the first time. It was specifically Cannon Beach. Um, and that's sort of the inspiration of where the story takes place. And funny enough, when I went there, and I was like, holy crap, this actually looks like Portland. And don't nod, they're not even from Portland. They're from France, or I believe they're in France. Um, and they just took reference photos. Like, for a, a place, like they based this game in an area that's on the other side of the world, and most of them, if ever, had never been there, but they were able to recreate Portland, at least the beach area, so well. But that's a side note, honestly. Like, this game... It depends on if you're interested in this sort of uh, aspect. I would say you should definitely try it. It has a bit of a teen angsty sort of storyline, but I just played this game a couple of years ago, and I think that the writing is superb, um, especially when you factor in Before the Storm. Before the Storm is the prequel story to Chloe, and while I, most would say play the prequel first, I wouldn't because I like how you go in raw, with it, um, it's up to you. Um, admittedly, playing through Before the Storm was a really cool backstory into Chloe. Like it was showing her relationship with Rachel, just showing Chloe's relationship with her f with her mother and her stepfather a lot more. Whereas Max, you are literally in her shoes and you're seeing it from her perspective and you only know that much. To go in knowing more by playing the prequel before the, the first main game I don't know, I feel that it kind of, um, it might lessen the experience. And like I said, just, 
you don't have to not play it, just don't play it first. I, I know it's weird to say, but just don't. Um, I would suggest playing the game first. And yeah, the story works out really well, and the ending choice, like the, the final thing that comes to the end of the game, um, there's a major, major decision. And it's one that I think about a lot. Um, if anything, it actually kind of, it's on the same level of video game choices that come from games like Mass Effect or Knights of the Old Republic. This game has a, a final decision that is so well um, formulated that it, it still it hits you. And uh, the, something else too is that it really resonated with its fan group because I'm a part of the Facebook group for Life is Strange and people love the first game. They love the prequel. They ha there's so much fan art, there's so much homage, there's so many um, uh, homages and just appreciate so much appreciation for the first game um, and its characters. Life is Strange 2 is a little different. Um, it certainly is a lot bigger than the first game. The first game could fit on a normal 360 disc. The prequel was a little bit bigger than that, but the second game, Life is Strange 2, is so big, I think it works out to being like full, maybe 30, 40 gigs total with all the stories untold. And that's because they, they got a bigger engine, um, they more so they just took more advantage of the Unreal Engine, and they had far longer stories, and that might be uh, a hindrance to some people. It was a legitimate criticism of the first game, in my, uh, sorry, in the second game, in my opinion, is that the first the first two chapters are very slow in the, of five. It, it, f number one starts off really good. It starts with a banger, but then it just takes so long for the story to get going. But admittedly, once the story does get going, it's very, very good. Um, I think the depending on how you end it the second story has an ending that is just as powerful as the first one and i think it's more so because it doesn't involve a time reality bending thing as much as the first one does because the second game the only supernatural element i guess you would say is that your brother um is able to you, the main character you you play um I can't remember his name right now. It's been a while. But anyways, his younger brother has psychic abilities. Um, and that's it. That's the only supernatural element in the entire story. The rest of it is just based on kind of current day politics, uh, current day affairs, and just regular people. I think that's one of the parts that I liked about Life is Strange to a little bit more than the first one. The first one overall is a much better game, I would say, in terms of its narrative and everything. But the second game does have, especially if you go with what is considered the good, the right ending, it, it brought a goddamn tear to my eye. I was, I was actually really emotionally hit by the one of the three endings, or what are those, technically there's four endings, but the main, the main good ending, I guess you would call it, absolutely wrecked me, wrecked me beyond belief. Um, but yeah, uh, just a little random little note. Um, I figured that I should have talked about this game a long time ago. Normally I would, um, I guess most people would do a, like a gameplay, like an essay and whatnot. But I just, I feel that you guys, if you haven't played it, you should definitely try it. It is one of my favorite games of all time, I could almost say. The soundtrack is at least. If you were to do those top 10 video game soundtracks, 100% it's up there. Like I'm going to... I'm looking out my window right now, and I'm going to try and go on a bike ride, um, even though it is negative one, it was negative three this morning. I'm going to try and go out on a bike ride and hopefully not die, but I'm going to pop that on. I'm going to pop that music on. It's that good. I even have a Spotify playlist for listening to bike riding and hiking music. A lot of the time, I just go and look up Life is Strange soundtrack. Anyways, I just thought that you guys should... Uh, a little, a little bit of tidbit from me. Um, I, I would really, really suggest it. It is a very good game, and for those of you who have played it, and you understand where I'm coming from, talk about your experiences with the game. Uh, it's, it's, it's really good. Um, admittedly, Don't Nod has kind of dipped into a few different things. They had a, a story called Tell Me Why, where I think I got... It's only a three-parter, but I got about 
20 minutes in and I was already bored. <laughs> um, and there's another one called Dark Mirror, which they, um, I haven't played it yet. It's based on, it's kind of their own interpretation of Twin Peaks and the X-Files, and apparently it's not very good, which is unfortunate. But I feel really when you're going into Twin Peaks territory, you're the only guy who can, so far, really, really well emulated is Sam Lake from the... Uh, Alan Wake series. I'm, I was playing Control a little while ago. Um, I immediately took a break from it, but it's that game is really good too. So far, it's really creepy, weird at, uh, atmosphere. Anyways, that's all for me. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys enjoyed this little rant. Um, it is making me. Uh, it, maybe if you guys like this, maybe I'll do something else in the future. But I just wanted to try something. I didn't want to. <coughs> excuse me. I didn't want to get in front of a camera. Um, I just kind of wanted to express my feelings because I'm just reading something right now. What is it? It's right... Uh... Sorry. Yeah, just... Oh, where is it? Here it is. Yeah. Um, today just so happens when I'm doing this recording right now, um, they're celebrating the birthday of Captain Spirit, this Chris character. Which, that, that's a, something else too um, to give to Don't Nod is after the first chapter of Life is Strange 2 they released a demo for something called Captain Spirit. And literally, this is a tiny tidbit story that you don't even have to play, you don't even have to touch it, you, it's free, that you don't have to, but if you want to, you find out about this kid who lives next door to where the main characters take place um, in the second chapter, and what you do in that story kind of affects how he, what happens to him in that story, only slightly, depending on what you do, but this, is a small little story that doesn't it takes place in a in a in a house or a trailer and a front and backyard and that's it that's all that the story takes place and there's so much emotion in this story that my roommate well, back when i played it he doesn't like these games but he even admitted that he's like oh man damn that's actually some that that that's oof that's that's heavy so yeah it, a, a small demo that was complete was released completely for free was able to affect someone who doesn't even like these games so there you go anyways guys that's all for me hope you enjoyed this video if you did leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribe and if you're interested in me doing something like this maybe in the future let me know because this was uh you know admittedly it's easy to put together but it's also something to talk about anyways talk to you later